Hello everybody, T. Spence here with my first ever video for my outdoor channel. So to start this thing off, what we're doing today is that we're going ice fishing. It is about 18 degrees out. It's come up about 4 degrees in the past hour. It's not crazy cold. I have my shack and my heater so if we need it I can set that up but stay tuned hopefully this is super exciting the target today is trout whether it's brown trout or brook trout if we catch some perch or some bass because there are some nice perch and bass in here that's a plus as well but the target is trout so stay tuned hope it's exciting for you and enjoy all right we're at my fishing spot parking lot's pretty empty which is sweet never get anything as you can see got my traps bait bucket get everything I need I'm not bringing my shack and my heater it's actually pretty warm out with that Sun glaring off the ice I think it's gonna be a good day um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up around here I was looking at the depth map it looks like up around the corner that's some deep water so I'm gonna go check that out stay tuned I will uh, post uh, more about my site here where I set up and stay here. Hope you enjoy. Just to give everybody an idea about what I'm doing here. This is just standard procedure. What I'm doing is I'm cleaning out the hole after I drilled it. So typically with a motorized auger, you can get a lot of this stuff out just by plunging the auger and running it because it'll pull a lot of this crap, this ice, sorry, up through the hole, clean it. But I do most of my stuff with a hand auger, mostly because I used to do a lot of hiking and fishing and the hand auger that I have is super quick, super easy, and it's light. Super, super, super light. What I'm going to do here, normally I'd kick all that ice shavings out of the top of the hole. But I'm going to leave it there for today just to uh, give my traps a little bit more height. Not that it really makes any difference, but I'm just going to do that today. What I have here is I have a hook, a little neon hook that I'm using. This, this is something I'm doing new this year. I've heard a lot of good things about them, so I'm interested to see how well they work. So I got my bait here. What I'm going to do, what I do, some people hook them through the mouth. I hook them through the back as such. Just like that. And I put them in the hole, and what they'll do is they'll swim down. Just like that. Now, one important thing is, is that you want lively bait. Because if you have a bait that's not that uh, is half dead or if it just is struggling they won't swim down the hole very well so make sure you get yourself some good bait today I'm using shiners um, not for any particular reason it's just I think what people normally use and I just didn't have any smells use what you have available right so there's trap number one set now I'm gonna go set four more all right, first flag of the day. I haven't even gotten my other trap set up. Let's see if this is an actual fish. Took my bait. Dang. Well, let's hope that goes off again, shall we? All right. All five traps are set. Use shiners for each one of them. Each one of them I put just a liter out just underneath the ice. Sometimes I like to fish down on bottom. Um, some fish like that, like togue, they're bottom feeders. So sometimes I'll put them right on bottom. But today I just put them all on top, kind of make it easy. Now I'm just hanging out. I have a Snickers bar. Um, I'm just enjoy myself, enjoy the weather. It is perfect out right now. It, is, it feels like it's like 50. I don't know if it actually is or not, but from the sun, no wind from the glare from the uh, snow and the ice really nice out it's 
but I don't think it could get any more perfect than this, really, other than catching some fish. But hey, that's why they call it fishing, not catching, right? Any of you who are watching this, uh, check this out. It's an app. It's called Game Ticks. My buddy John, he and his kids have uh, put this thing together. Basically, you go on, post a picture and where you shot something or caught something, and you can share the story on there with other people. And it's all people who are just like us that enjoy the outdoors, hunting and fishing. So it's really great. Check it out. Um, they're just a good family. Um, just trying to keep everybody intertwined on what everybody's doing and how they're trying new things. I have a few things on there as well that um, that I posted that I shot and caught throughout the years. It's just a really good app. So if you get the chance, check it out. So uh, cheers to a perfect day. Holy crap. I don't know why that's so hard, but I'm going to work on that. Maybe it's frozen. I have no idea, but we'll keep working on that. Okay, so while we're waiting for a flag, I feel like I gotta talk about my hand auger more. I love this thing. It has really done a lot of good things for me since I've been ice fishing. My dad bought me this thing, I think back in 2010 or 11. Um, like I said before, I was doing a lot of hiking and fishing, so I wanted something light, something quick. So he bought me what they call a Nils hand auger. And just let's check this thing out for a second. Okay, so what you have for this auger here is you got two handles. One is off-centered, the other one's up top. And what that does is that that gives you time to work both hands. So you get double the, uh, double the hand action as far as uh, drilling your hole. The other great thing is, look at the head on that, right? So, as you can see, it shaves it per se versus trying to uh, cut it and drill it. It's shaving it and it's shaving itself down through the ice. So this thing, when, we, when my dad and I first got it, because he's got one just like it, and uh, we were able to go through, I want to say it was like 20 or 22 inches of ice in 24 seconds. I mean, they crank. I have not changed this blade since 2010, 2011, and it still cuts very well. I am going to end up getting a new blade for it because it is getting a little dull. Um, it is getting, it's not so much having a hard time cutting, it's just cutting crooked. So I want to get a new blade and uh, that way it's nice and sharp again. This is an 8 inch. I don't even know if they make a 10 inch, but this is what I recommend. This thing cuts like a dream. So yeah, if you haven't already figured it out, I'm on a solo ice fishing trip right now. It's just a pond that's right down the road from my house that I love to fish, but Normally I'd like to do this with my friends or my fiance or what have you, but unfortunately work gets in the way and real life gets in the way, so sometimes it's hard to find people to go with and sometimes the only way that you're going to do it is if you just go out and do it on your own. And I got to tell you, I'm having a blast just by myself, really. Uh, not much is going on. I haven't gotten a flag yet besides that first one that I lost the bait, but and I'm listening to... Listen to some country music on my phone. Got my bucket of bait with a seat on it. I'm just enjoying myself here. How can you be eating snacks, sitting on a bait pail, watching traps, being outdoors? This is awesome. There's no place I'd rather be right now than right here. So stay tuned. If we don't get a flag, it is what it is. But hey, at least we're out here doing it, right? And it's fun. Look at that. Second flag of the day. See we got here. Oh, it's running. You just spit it. Oh, shoot. oh we got another flag. Hold on. I'll fix the bait on that one here in a minute. All right, flag number three. Second one, spit the bait. Hopefully third one's a charm, right? You gotta be freaking kidding me. 
<sighs> well, that's the frustrating thing about ice fishing right there. I just had two flags back to back. First one, that went off. That one was running. And I could see the spool spinning. Set the hook. It's swimming, swimming, swimming. I thought I had him hooked good. And then it spit the bait. This one just took my bait. So I'm kind of thinking, wondering if the if it's the hooks I bought. I bought these new neon green hooks. I think that they're hitting the hook with the bait. Obviously, I'm getting flags. But it's either my bait, they're too weak, or it's that these new hooks maybe are ripping ripping out of the bait too easy. That could happen depending on the bait, uh, depending on the hook. So hopefully we get another flag so we can test this out again. That first one, that had to have done, that had been something to do with the uh, hook set. I usually don't really have a problem with that. The other thing is, is if they're trout, sometimes trout have a really soft mouth. So they, it may have been a brown, may have been a brookie that uh, just barely had a hold of the bait. But there's only one way to find out, right? And that's hopefully another flag goes off and hopefully we can pull one of these fish up so we can see what we're catching here. It's exciting. That's three uh, flags for the day. Two stolen bait and then one user error. But we'll keep fishing. Hopefully it keeps getting exciting for you. All right, this fish has been giving me trouble. Let's see what we got now. Oh, baby. Woo. Look at that. Look at that right there. First trout of the year. About a 13, skinny 13 or so. <sighs> nice. We doing a catch and cook on him later. Awesome. All right, we got another flag. one's not moving much. Oh yeah. Whatever that is, that's nice. Oh, right, right. Got ourselves largemouth bass. There we go. Now we're getting onto them. It's not a huge one, but largemouth bass typically fight pretty good. So that's where we're at. So that was uh, pretty exciting. Those are the same two traps that we've been getting flags on. It's about 1230-ish, just over around 1240 actually. And so we caught one 13-inch brookie. And uh, one, I'd probably say, uh, probably 14 15 inch bass um i'm surprised to catch that bass out in that deep of water that's pretty deep right there i want to say it's looking at the map it looked like it was about 20 to 30 feet granted i didn't measure it out i didn't sound it out or anything so but hey we're on the board finally those are the two same traps like i said a lot of excitement finally pulled something out of the water to see exactly what it is um one thing i did notice though that brook trout that i caught that hook set still wasn't a good one. When I got him out of the water, he spit it and um, wasn't hooked at all. So I think I may look for a different hook. I got to say those neon green hooks, those are working good. But I almost wonder if it's the brand I got. The barb doesn't look like it's really a big, big barb on it. So I don't think they're hooking the trout very well. The bass, he was fine. I actually had to cut the line. Just so most of you know. I've heard this in the past. I believe it to be true, but a hook in a in a fish's mouth, if you cut the line, it'll dissolve in about a week or two. Yeah, it sucks that it's in there, but at least the fish lives to see another day. So most of the time, if I'm not going to keep it and I can't get the hook out, uh, instead of killing it, I cut the line so that it'll live another day. Um, so with bass, I did that. I cut the line so that the hook could dissolve and he could be caught another day. 
the trout I kept. We're going to do a catch and cook later on that. I'm just watching the flag, sorry. Um, and hopefully we still catch some more. It was exciting there for a little bit. Glad that we finally got to catch a brook trout first one of the year. So let's keep at it. See if we can catch another one. Hey, what's going on? I am back to finish this video. Uh, like I said, we caught a 13 inch brook trout, so I'm doing a catch and cook right now. So I'm going to finish pre uh, preparing it. I've already cut the head off and gutted it out. Figured you, uh, figured you people probably didn't want to see that. Even if you did, that's okay because I'm not going to post it. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to post the prep from here on out and everything else I'm cooking with it. So stay tuned. All right. So first I want to just show you this fish fillet here. So what I've done is that I basically deboned it. As you can see, there's still some ribs in here, which is fine because when you cook it, those will come out easy enough. But the back, the spine is gone. Basically all you have to do is that you go in, you take that fish, and you cut all the fins off as much as you can. I didn't cut these ones off because I didn't really need to. But you cut that back one off, and you cut the uh, dorsal fin off along with the head and everything. Then you cut it all the way back till it's open. Then all you have to do is just run your fingers up the sides and the meat will pop right off the backbone and you just cut it out. The bigger fish, the ribs will come out as well, but this one's a 13 incher. The ribs weren't strong enough so they were breaking apart on me, which is fine. Like I said, once it cooks, those will pop out easy enough. So not a big deal, but just look how beautiful those spots are on that fish. Beautiful fish. That thing is going to taste delicious. Look at that orange meat in there. Can't wait to cook that up and see how he, see how he tastes. But before we do that, right now I've got white rice cooking in the rice cooker. And I'm going to cook some cabbage. So what I do is that I buy just angel hair coleslaw cabbage. Uh, this is market side. That's the brand. I don't, it doesn't really matter what brand cabbage you get. Cabbage is cabbage in my view. But this is what I get. What I do is I fry it up with a bunch of different stuff here. So, so starting off, I want to put the pan on medium heat. So what I'm going to be mixing in with this cabbage is I put some rice vinegar in it. Sesame seed oil, soy sauce. Now I'm going to try something new. Normally I only put in those three things, but I'm going to try to put in just a little bit of teriyaki sauce, see if it gives it a little bit more of an Asian taste to it. Basically what we're going to do is just, we're just going to have fried cabbage, fish, and white rice. Super basic, but it should taste super good. First. I'm gonna put in the sesame seed oil, just put an oil base on the pan. Just like that. Let's just wait for that to heat up for a little bit. So the big thing about cabbage is that cabbage will shrink in the pan. So don't worry about it if it's if it seems like it's overloaded in the pan or if there's a big pile of it. Don't worry because it'll always shrink. So I'm just going to put this whole bag right in there. As you can hear, the oil is sizzling in there. That's nice and hot. So now what do I do? I put a little bit more season uh, sesame seed oil. Sorry, over the top as such. Then I put in some soy sauce once again. There it is right there. Now, I, uh, I put in quite a bit of seasonings when I do this, just because I like a lot of flavor. And then a little bit of rice vinegar. Now this I don't go super crazy on, just enough to Give it some flavor here. Pan's a little hot, so I'm gonna turn it down. 
What you want to do with the beginning of it, and this is all my recipe here. This is things that I figured out through trial and error, is you don't want the pan super hot at first because it'll char it and it won't necessarily cook it. It'll just burn it a little bit. So what I do is I put the pan on nice and low heat and then just let it heat on that low heat with all the juices because it's gonna shrink. And it's not gonna burn, but it's gonna cook and it's gonna be really nice. Then once I want it to crisp up, if I want to, I'll turn the heat up and just put a crisp layer on it. That's already smelling super good. So now what I'm gonna do, like I said, this is new. So everybody hang tight because this is uh, just something I've never done before. I mean, it can't be terrible, right? Teriyaki sauce is delicious. A little bit of teriyaki never hurt anybody, right? Uh, we'll be, put quite a bit in there. Oh, smells good. All right, so now we're gonna cook the fish. All I have here is just some butter. I'll put that right in the pan, let that heat up. So what I'm gonna do with the fish is that when I put it in the pan, I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon juice on it. Then I'm gonna put some seasoned salt. Those of you who have not tried season all seasoned salt, I use it for everything. It is delicious. It seems like it goes well. I use it on fish, steak, chicken. It's just great. All right, so what I'm gonna do, there's our fish filet. Oh man, that looks good. It's weird because in in here, it looks all orange. But out here it looks nice and pink, so it'll be interesting to see how this, it's going to taste good no matter what, but it'll be interesting. So I put it skin down on nice low heat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of lemon juice on it as such. Now I'm going to put some of that seasonal on it. Now. I put quite a bit of this stuff on just because I found that if you don't, you don't get all the flavor from the seasonal. It's almost like a lot of it will cook off. Maybe not, but I put on a lot. So I don't know if you can see from the video here. I'll zoom in for you. As you can see, I put a lot of seasonal on that fish. Nope, I cooked the cabbage a little too hot because I was messing around with the brook trout. That's okay, I think it's done. Yeah, it looks done to me. So we're just gonna take that right off the heat. Just like that, so that's good. So the reason why I cook it skin down first is because it'll actually curl a little bit. As you can see, I just turned the heat up. Now it's starting to curl right here and right here. So what I do is I cook it so it'll curl up and then when I flip it, the idea is that it'll curl back the, the other way or it'll be done curling and the middle will cook. So let's just take a look at that cabbage real quick. I mean, it doesn't look too crazy, but it should be so good. I'm gonna zoom in on this fish so you can watch it cook here. So what I do with brook trout is that it's not a scaly skin that's on them. You don't have to descale them. You don't have to take the meat off the skin or fillet them or anything like that. All you do, and I love it this way, is that you just fry it with the skin on it. And actually the skin, to me, is really good. It holds a lot of flavor, so. Especially these corner pieces, if you get a lot of uh, if you get a lot of season seasonal on it. Oh man!
I'm just going to let that cook on low heat, hoping that it doesn't stick to the pan. That's a pretty well seasoned pan, but it still tends to, things still tend to stick to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of butter underneath it here. I know I'm using a lot of butter, but like teriyaki sauce, who does not like a lot of butter, right? Well, butter didn't hurt anybody. There we go. Now we just wait until it's done. So we're about to eat this fish that I just cooked up. It's on the plate, but before we do, I just want to say do not forget to check this out, Game Ticks. It's an app and it's on Instagram. It's a place that you can go, that you can post pictures of the fish you catch or the animals that you shoot and tell a brief story about how it happened and where if you'd like to. It's free. It's just really cool to be able to share these stories with everybody. The fish that I just caught today, I posted it on there, put a short description on what happened. And I don't usually put where I go on it, but some people do. But it's just really cool to be able to see other stories that people are posting. So, like I said, check it out. It's free as far as I know of. It was free when I signed up for it. But check it out. Now let's try this fish. All right, so I have the fish and the cabbage here. The rice is still finishing up, but I just wanted to try it while you were right here before my fiance gets home so that we can eat dinner together. This is half the fish, the other half is on her plate, but let's just try the cabbage first here. Oh yeah. A little bit of teriyaki, teriyaki sauce on it. Whew. Yeah, that's really good. I love cabbage anyway, so just putting the extra seasoning in there, really good. Now, let's try this fish. This is fresh brook trout. Look at that meat on there. Man, oh man. Nothing like fresh caught fish. So, cheers. Oh yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That is really good. Oh man, that's really good. Talk about tender. See how it's peeling right off that skin? That skin's really good too, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh man. That's really good. So thank you for, your, thank you for tuning in. But this was a lot of fun. Especially for my first video, I definitely want to keep doing it. And if you have any suggestions or if you have any comments or ideas, let me know. Send me a message. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you for uh, watching my video and, and uh, enjoy your night.